it's over, man. Creativity's dead. It's gone. Creativity's gone. And Luminar AI has killed it. No, I'm just joking. The opposite. Creativity is not dead. Luminar AI that's coming for a lot of flack from people who have never used it um, is a fantastic tool for actually bringing out creativity in your photos. And I'm gonna show you here today how we can use the templates that are built into Luminar AI either as a quick fix, which perhaps is not particularly creative, and I think that's where the biggest problem is coming for a lot of people that thinking the AI is gonna do everything for you. It's not, it can do a lot, and it can do a quick fix for you, but my suggestion to you is, if you wanna make the most out of your photography and your photos, delve a little deeper into templates, and I'll show you here how to do it. So before we dive into the actual edit itself and showing you how these templates work, let me just explain a little bit about how they actually work and how Luminar AI applies them to your photos. So the groundbreaking thing with Luminar AI is it's the first photo editor which actually is built on AI, artificial intelligence, right from the ground up. So basically Luminar AI is able to analyze your photograph and based on what it sees in the scene, and it's able to make suggestions to you as to what templates could be appropriate to actually improve that photo. Now, that's a really useful thing for people who are particularly starting out in photography and don't really know, how do I make my photo look better? I don't really know what to do. I don't know photo editing. This is such a powerful tool for them. So you can either go with what Luminar AI is suggesting or what I encourage you to do once you get the hang of understanding these templates is actually dive into them and you have access to all of the tools that actually make up the template and you're then able to fine tune things exactly how you like or even add more things. So you might like a general look of what a template is doing but you don't really like the particular color balance of it. You're able to change that and then you can save that as a new template that you wanna use. So you can actually craft your own unique templates and that's where your creativity starts to come in. So let's take a look at Luminar AI and I'll show you how to do this. So here we are inside of Luminar AI. This is the beta version. So the full version isn't released yet, but you guys will get a really good sense of how this program's working and how you'll be able to do this with your own templates. So if we open up an image here, this landscape that I took recently, I really love this shot, but I just feel that it's missing a little bit of the wow factor that it could have. So what we can start to do is from this catalog module that we were in, or are in now, we can come along to our templates so that we can choose a template, we can then edit it, and then we export our image. So this is the workflow that Luminar is suggesting to us. So let's jump into templates, and straight away it's analyzed the photo and it says for this photo on the right hand side here, it recognizes that the scene is a nature scene, landscape, and so it's got a collection of nature templates here. So I could select one of these, let's go sunny, small, uh, micro world. You can just click through these and you can find something that you like the look of. As you can see, these templates are applied pretty much instantaneously, so you're able to get a really good feel of the direction you would like to take the photograph. Let's now jump into this scenery collection and see what this has got. So here we've got clear and sharp. We could come down to fast fix, and I really like this one. If we do a comparison using the eye tool from before and then let go to see after, that's just a really nice improvement. We've got a much more punchy image, nothing too drastic in terms of changing the image, but in terms of the wow factor and just giving it something extra, it's just enough just to really lift the image from something that's a nice photo, but a little bit flat to something that's much more rich and punchy. I like the color much more. We could say we're done with this, but in terms of that level of creativity, all we've done is click a button. So we are relying on Luminar AI to present to us some ideas of what might look good, and we're just selecting one. So we're not really delving too deep into what these tools are actually capable of and that's fine if you're a beginner or you're someone in a rush this is where this program is absolutely perfect the ceo of the company i was watching him on a webinar talking about the program and uh, he's so passionate about this and the idea of saving people time from the mundane tasks like if i was to to do this edit in photoshop or lightroom i could do it 
and it probably wouldn't take me too long to be honest to do this type of change but it's there still would be a time investment in terms of correcting curves color balance things like that the fact that you can do it with one click i just think that's phenomenal but let's see if we can take more creative control now let's jump into the edit tab and you can see straight away we're in what is the essentials tab those of you who know luminar 4 some of this will be familiar to you um, we've got the essentials tab a creative tab portrait and professional and below that this local masking tab this is where you're actually able to do in effect layering so although layers have been removed from luminar ai i've been playing around with this local masking feature and it's very very powerful and you're able to do a lot of what you could do with layers and potentially more and the fact is the getting rid of layers and replacing it with this tool i am told that's enabled the developers to really speed the software up overall so that's really cool and i have noticed a massive speed increase so let me quickly explain to you what's going on once we've jumped into the edit tab we can see anything that that template that we applied which was the fast fix we can see by denoting by this little bullet point here these are the tools so light enhance color and landscape are the tools that have been invoked by that particular template so we can see that we've got golden hour um, and that would be responsible for uh, increasing that lovely warm golden look to it so if i push that to 100 and completely over bake it and over saturate it you'll see that just a little hint of that coming in is really nice so i think this is really good being able to delve into these templates and see okay accent ai uh, which is a really really powerful AI feature uh, because it's able to enhance so much with one slider um, you can see that that was set at 50 but you might decide that it's too much and you want to just drop that back so this is where it starts coming in that you can adapt the templates to your particular liking so we spoke about creativity before and this is where I would actually like to put my creative stamp on this which is embracing the fact that there's a slight sea mist coming in bit of a fog coming in there and I've also included just a tiny bit of a sunburst there I could have framed this out by blocking it with one of these branches but I actually wanted that included in the shot but the sun rays they they're kind of pathetic they just fade out by the end of this branch um, so I'm wondering whether we can get something with a bit more oomph to it something more volumetric and the way I'm going to do that is actually start building into this template, building into this look, um, a bit of atmosphere and some more sun rays. So I'm going to come to this creative tab, come to atmosphere. And now atmosphere AI is a new feature within Luminar AI and it's super cool. I love it. As with so many of the tools, what I like to do is totally over crank it to 100 so you can just see what's going on. And here you can see the fog. We can go layered fog and that just drops the fog uh, down to the floor. You can just see down there the layered fog. We've got a depth slider which lets you take it away to the horizon or bring it in closer towards you. So this is a really neat way of controlling this, this look. Now I really, really love mist, haze, layered fog. It's an effect that I will often add in to my photos and I would normally be painting this in in Photoshop with a brush. The fact that I can do this and this is being masked out in, in real time based on three-dimensional information that doesn't even exist in a two-dimensional photo. The AI is working out what's the background, what's the foreground. It's just, it's really cool, kind of mind-blowing stuff how you're able to do this. But let's, let's go pretty heavy-handed with this. Now we've got some haze there. That's going to give us the believability that sun rays could be coming through in the atmosphere and actually picking up in this haze. So although I like to enhance and also sometimes alter my photographs, um, I, everyone has their own line about how much they're prepared to or should or shouldn't change photos. Um, I'm happy enhancing a landscape. As long as I'm not saying this is a documentative photo, and I'm saying this is an art piece. This is a vision that I have for this photo and it is an art piece, I'm happy. So I will now come in and put some sun rays in this bad boy. So we'll, we'll crank the amount to 100 and straight away we can see those sun rays. And if you've not used this tool before um, and you're not familiar with this, like oh, be blown away by this. Isn't this cool? Like as you move it around behind objects, the sun rays disappear and they reappear when you get to the gaps. 
Like, how cool is that? That's so awesome. Guys, just quickly, I'm sure you probably already have Luminar AI, but if you don't, I'd love it if you'd be able to use that link below uh, to purchase your copy if it looks like something that's of interest and benefit to you. That just helps me keep creating free content for you and support my family as well, because uh, I get small commission from that. So I'd really appreciate that. But for now, let's get back to editing and creating templates. So anyway, we want to make sure that, that matches up with our sun there. And obviously that is far too much at the moment. So what we can do is play around with these sliders just to get the, the look of it, how we want. I'm gonna bring the sun glow radius up slightly. I'm gonna bring the amount down. It doesn't need to be quite as hot as what it is. Uh, let's bring that right down there, the sun radius. Yeah, bring that down. And the number of sun rays, let's have a little spin of this dial and see what that looks like. We can randomize the look as well. So you really have got a lot of control over this. So if you find something that you like, so for example, I quite like this, I can now come back to the top and now I can play with that amount slider. Now what I'm looking at here is see over this branch here, we're bleaching out. That's to me completely unbelievable. Whereas some of these rays look really nice. That particular bit is too much. So I'm just gonna grab that slider and bring it until that's just faded away to that point of believability and we can turn toggle this off and on and we can see the change we've made and I really like that. From here I'll often just play around with some of the other sliders because they're so quick to play around with. Why not? Just grab the slider and have a little go, see what it does. Um, don't be afraid. Um, the LUTs, I really love these for just colour styling and adding mood. Uh, so yeah, I, I quite like Palm Springs for this one. Um, if we crank it all the way up, it's far too much. But by cranking it up, you can see which colors it's introducing into the shadows and the highlights. And then now you know, now you understand, you're in the position to make that creative decision of how much of that do I actually want? And I'm just gonna tickle in a little bit of that, maybe around that 30 mark where it was. I find that the default of 30 is a pretty good place for these, to be honest. We're gonna go with a little bit of mystical here and, and pop this in, let's have a look. Yeah, that's, that's really nice because I've got quite a lot of crunchy detail going on here. Um, I've got a feeling there might be a bit of the structure added from the essentials. Let's have a look. No, no structure in this one, but uh, why don't we add some? Yeah, I really like all the detail that we've got going on in the tree trunks coming out over here. I think that's really interesting. So yeah, let's, let's add a bit of structure in. To keep our attention sort of centered on this image, I'm actually gonna introduce uh, some vignetting. And so that is either darkening or brightening around the edges of a frame. And I'm going to darken because I normally like to draw your attention to the middle of the frame and your eye will always go to the brightest part of images first. Um, and I like to increase the size slightly. I'll normally work with the amount, again, uh, the full amount, so I can actually see exactly where my vignette is going. Um, I can play with the roundness and get a feel for what I want to do with that. I might even go for a bit of a sort of side vignette for this one. I like to feather it off so it's a smooth transition. Uh, sometimes I bring a bit of inner light, but in this case, I'm happy with my highlights, how they are, I don't wanna brighten that up anymore. And now we can just bring that amount down to a point where we feel happy. So maybe somewhere around 38. Let's turn that off, turn that on. It's not doing too much, let's uh, let's put it up a bit higher. We'll go a bit more heavy handed than I might normally be just so you guys can see exactly what I'm doing. Personally, I find the whole image is just a little bit oversaturated. So I could come into the color section and I can either desaturate it uh, like this or I can just drop the vibrance. Now I've got a more muted look to the whole photo. I'm gonna come into the pro section and this section here, color harmony, this is a great place to actually start playing around with the different colors in your photo. So we might wanna warm things up slightly again, dropping those cool tones down into the blues, that's quite nice as well. So now we're getting a nice color harmony of the oranges complemented with the blues and I'm really liking that. If we want to introduce any color into the shadows, like some blues into the shadows, uh, we can do that. Don't want to take that too far into the blues. I might make my highlights a bit warmer, just so we've got a nice warm feel to the sun. Yeah, that's quite nice. And again, we're starting to oversaturate a little bit, so we can always jump back into uh, the Essentials tab, color, and just bring that saturation down again. So we've got the nice warm colors, but it's not too offensive to your eye. So now we can look at our before, and our after, and we've actually come a really long way with this image from this to this. We've certainly give it a distinctive look. 
So now we have our own template. We're free to reuse on other photos that we have created ourselves. So we can pat ourselves on the back and say that was our creative vision that has got us here from this to this. Sure, we used one of Luminar's templates just as a Kickstarter, but it was literally just a little Kickstarter. Just before I show you how to save the template, let me just explain something to you as well, which is great. You saw our sort of before and after that we had. Let's say we really like the after look, but perhaps when we do a comparison, we're like, well, we may have actually taken this just a little step too far. It's just a little bit too much. So what you can do is actually come down to this slider in the bottom right, and you can just ease off that look. You see, if I take it all the way down to zero and push it all the way back to 100, we could actually say we liked what we did, uh, but maybe not 100%. Maybe let's just bring that down to 70%. And that's where we can we can be quite heavy handed in what we're creating and then be more refined and subtle just by easing it off. And unlike other programs where you would need to go into every single um, tool that you've made adjustments to and ease them off one by one, we can do that just with one slider. And I think that is so, so powerful and I love it. So let's save this out. Let's come to save and it's saved that one at 100%. And now in the template section, if I come here, we just come down to this start, which is my collection, and we go to the user templates, and we can see we have fast fix edit, which is what we've just worked on here. And I recommend you rename it to something that's meaningful to you. So I've called that sun flare warm up, and I'll hit enter. And that is now accessible to me to apply to any photo at any point. Okay, so now we've saved our template. It's accessible for us to apply to any photo. Um, it may not be perfect for all photos, of course not, um, but it's gonna do a pretty good job. So let's have a try with something quite different. Let's open this photo of my son here. Good boy doing the lawn mowing, good lad. Let's see, see what we can do by applying that template. So let's click the AT Sun Flare Warm Up. That's AT for Anthony Turnham. There we go, let's click it and boom, it's applied just like that. We can come up and see our before and our after. We might think, hey, it's looking good. I like the colorization, that's really nice, but I'm not sure about the flare, it might be too much. Well, that's when we can jump back into the edit section, come into creative, a tab here and where we've got the sun rays we can just turn that off if we want and so here we're still retaining creative control we actually made this template and let's again look at our before and our after it was a lovely warm summer evening when he was mowing the lawn this photo doesn't really have the feeling that i had when i was taking this photo it doesn't have that warmth but with that preset that we just created that template you can just apply that and you're done. As far as templates go, I really hope that you can see that they're very, very powerful and they're quite intuitive to use. Like Luminar AI makes those suggestions and you can go with them. But I strongly encourage you not just to settle with what's built into the program. I strongly encourage you to delve a little deeper and have a play around. You're not gonna break anything. Like just get the sliders, play around, see what they do and you will start to find your own signature look based on the tools that you enjoy applying. I've really enjoyed making this video and part of that is I'm just really enjoying using Luminar AI. It's much quicker than the previous versions of Luminar, much more responsive, all controlled through a really nice, clean user interface. So it's it's really awesome. If you do wanna get it, I do have that link below. I'd really appreciate if you'd use that link. It just helps support the channel, helps me create free content for you and helps me support my family. So thank you so much, guys. I'll catch you in the next video. Cheers.